Here are the top highlights from SummerSlam and the SummerSlam press conference. Let's get to it. Kicking things off with the new WWE Women's Champion Nia Jax along with Tiffany Stratton. The first question asked was about Nia Jax winning Queen of the Ring when just years earlier, women weren't allowed to wrestle in Saudi Arabia. Nia Jax mentioned that Vince McMahon originally wanted her to be part of the very first women's match to take place in the country, but wasn't able to do it. She put over Lyra Valkyra saying she is an incredible opponent at King and Queen of the Ring. I then asked both Nia Jax and Tiffany Stratton how they came to be together as friends both off camera and on camera. Nia Jax said that she requested sitting next to Tiffany Stratton during their flight to Australia for Elimination Chamber earlier this year and they clicked right off the bat. She praised Tiffany Stratton for being incredibly talented in the ring. Go ahead Tiff. Oh, you want me to start? Yes, I do. Okay, well, she basically handpicked me to be her bestie. We were on our way to Australia for Elimination Chamber and she sat next to me and she literally requested it. Yeah. So, fun fact. Well, she was a newbie. This was her first international tour. I wanted to make sure she was going to be okay and safe out there. You know, you never know. And we clicked right off the bat. I mean, let's be real. She's she so cute. And uh, she's incredibly talented in the ring. And, you know, it's she's like lightning in a bottle. It, it's very rare to see it here, you know, like she's what, two and a half years in, she gets it, she's athletic, she's got this aura about her. I mean, we constantly go over in, uh, like how many merch options we can do for her. <laughs> she pitches everything. I literally, I'm like, let's do this and this. So, you know, I saw her and I instantly had like a connection with her and I'm like, you know, you're going to be under my wing because Nia Jax is quite the, you know, force and she really had no choice. Uh, <laughs> but I'm excited for this pairing and to see where Moving on to LA Knight. Regarding winning the WWE United States Championship, LA Knight said that he thought 2023 was the foundation and 2024 would be where he started his legacy. Long overdue. Uh, I don't know if anybody could read lips out there, but most of the stuff I was saying you probably can't say right now because uh, it was a lot of uh, F and right and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Because, uh, yeah, it is long overdue. And I guess let's come back to your question, sir. Uh, you talk about the fact that maybe it's long overdue. Maybe it's right on time. I don't know. But at this point, it's feeling like the right time to me because, I mean, I think a lot of people, especially you, you look into the winter time. Hey, you look, I, I see the talk and people are like, oh, I don't know. I think I think L.A. Knight's falling off. Am I falling off now? Because no. I think last night when I walked out there and everybody got standing up yelling L.A. Knight, my guy, new U.S. championship. We're only taking off from here. Moving on to Cody Rhodes. Regarding this being Pharaoh's last ride with him, Cody said that Pharaoh is 13 years old and doesn't want to keep taking him on the road. He thanks WWE for letting him bring his dog to shows. In regards to Roman Reigns' return, he said he wouldn't be sitting here with the WWE Championship without him. There's no love lost between the two, and that's as much of a shoot as it gets. He thinks a title rematch between the two is down the line. This current WWE landscape, you can't call it. Uh, we, we, we just had a behind the scenes documentary on how the best laid plans can just go to hell in one moment because it's just a kind of controlled chaos where these beautiful things happen. I don't know in terms of certainly Roman Reigns is entitled to not just a rematch. I mean, Roman Reigns held this title for so long. That match, it has to happen. And then some one of those where, to a degree, it's, it's rather, you know, you're not supposed to say this when you're a baby face, but it's rather scary. The idea, I've been in there twice with him, and brother hits hard. Um, so the idea of that is there to do, you know, I don't know if anyone saw, but I was tapping the title like this. Because I know there's a third one somewhere, some, somewhere down the line. I know I'm not his friend. He didn't do that for me. He did that because of what's happened with the bloodline and Solo. I think that's something to stay tuned for probably on SmackDown in a sense of what happens with the bloodline. The bloodline has been the anchor of WWE for some time and what happens next, not just with Solo, not just with Roman, but Jacob Fatu, who is, as we all can see, there's something unbelievable. Um, I don't have to like him to tell you that. There's something special there, but there's a lot of match 
options that are in front of us, and that's for the man who's going to be up here next um, to kind of decide what happens next. I'm always ready. When asked about Arn Anderson appearing with him at SummerSlam, Cody Rhodes said that when he was in AEW, Arn was a piece of sanity in a really chaotic time. He hopes he sees more of Anderson in the future because he means a great deal to him. For um, for people who follow just the general story and the, the, the road I've been on, Arn is a huge part of it. I had made that decision uh, when I was with AEW. I had made the decision that, hey, I can't have my dad for this stuff. He's not here physically. I want someone who was with him. And they could have even been, they didn't have to be an ally. They could have been an adversary. He came in and he was such a piece of sanity for me during a really chaotic time. And just, Arn is one of the smartest people you'll meet in pro wrestling and sports entertainment. But he's also, <coughs> so ahead of the curve and since like, hey, I see where this is going. I I get a feel for what the business evolves, like all sports, the business evolves and, and Arn has always been able to be there. For me, it was just special to have a moment with him, um, particularly one where he wasn't threatening to, to shoot me or something of that nature. <laughs> uh, it, it was it was nice because he means, he means a great deal to me. I hope we see more of uh, AA and, and something that this is, this is an internal thing, it's inside baseball. If I get in trouble for sharing this, I apologize. But something that WWE did today that I thought was incredible, I've never seen this before, was all the wrestlers got a text, all of us, Byron, you got it, we all got it, about the legends that were going to be here tonight. And not just, hey, the legends will be here tonight, go say hello, go say thank you. There was a one-sheeter with each of their pictures and a biography, because, you know, we got a lot of young guns. Tiffany Stratton, for example, they may not know everybody, probably does, but just the idea that the legends are gonna be treated that way here as WWE's entered its greatest era ever, really hats off to Crystal Gentle, Matt Altman, Nick Khan, Triple H, Bruce, whoever came up with it. I thought it was a really brilliant thing. Again, back to Arn, uh, I hope we see more of him, and I hope uh, he's next to me. And moving on to Triple H, while running down the card and giving his thoughts on each match, he mentioned that Jacob Fatu was a little banged up following the Bloodline Rules match. He also said that Logan Paul was banged up. I then asked Triple H why WWE chose to partner with TNA. Triple H said that it's about giving talents reps and getting more matches, mentioning that the old territory system is dead. So I, th I think as we've said before, we're open for business. Right? Whether that's um, what you see in NXT, uh, with TNA or whether that's different international opportunities. We're going to look at what's best for WWE, but how does that benefit us? How does it benefit them? Um, how does it benefit us? You know, I think there's opportunities as you look at NXT, a lot of those, those kids are young and what they really need is repetitions. They need opportunities to go do. We can only create so many of them. So when we have opportunities to, to partner with others, help their business at the same time. Um, you know, get them on a platform that is seen by so many more people. Use the, the strength and the power of our brand across social media to help them. I think you'll see more of that, right? So when we have the opportunity to help them while at the same point in time getting the future of not just us, the future of this business, more opportunities and more reps to improve what they do as performers to improve what they do in, on every aspect of what they go out day in and day out and do. You know, th the world is different now. There is no, there aren't territories where you're out there working a couple hundred days a year. And I don't know that anybody would want to, but we, we all did it, but it's how everybody got where they got to and how they got good and how they learned this. So we have to create that and we have to give those opportunities to other people to grow and to have that because the only way they're going to learn how to do this, the only way you learn to go out there and feel that crowd and understand it and change what you're doing and have that dynamic, because you plan it all you want in the back. When you get out there, and that's where the magic happens. I don't care what anybody says. And those decisions, that those, those in-the-moment game day decisions that are made there live, your nuances, that's what makes this great. So it's reps. It's, it's really reps, especially when you're just starting in the business. So I want them to have that. So when we can create those opportunities to me, whoever that's with, I'm, I'm excited to do it.
He was then asked about Stephanie McMahon and if she has an official role with the company, to which Triple H said she doesn't, but comes to the shows because she loves this. He would expect her to be around in the future. He was also asked about John Cena's status, to which Triple H said he would be back soon to kick off his 2025 retirement tour. Additionally, when asked about the possibility of more events turning into two-day events such as the Royal Rumble, Triple H said that they would take it step by step. He did say he thought that this would be the final one day SummerSlam event. You know, who, who knows what the future brings, but I do think that even tonight, seeing this SummerSlam seven match card goes almost four hours to me. Um, and yet there was a lot of stuff we could have put into this. Um, and, you know, and, and even some people saying, well, why wasn't that in there? Because it would have been eight hours, right? Um, and you still need stuff for Raw, and you still need massive content for SmackDown, right? You still need all that stuff. Um, as we continue to grow, we'll take it, like I said, step by step. So is this the last SummerSlam that you see that is one night? I think so, but we'll see where that goes long term. Um, I'm excited about that opportunity. As far as other PLEs going that way, we're, we're always, you can never say this is just what we do. And then that's it, and that's locked in, and we're just, that's what we do. It's just the way it is. And right, If you go back five years, who would have thought we would have been doing two night WrestleManias, let alone two night WrestleManias and two night SummerSlams. So we'll see, we'll see where it goes. Um, in, and you know, that's an important part of where we go with it, but an important part of where we go with that also is bringing these events around the globe. We are truly a global company. There's no place that WWE is not seen. There's no place where we don't have a massive fan base and following. We want to bring WWE to the world, not just, you know, be seen as a, as a US based company, but that's seen everywhere else. We want to literally be everywhere else um, and uh, be as big as we possibly can be everywhere. So it's always uh, sort of a moving target, but it makes for hell an exciting ride. Roman Reigns made his first WWE appearance since losing the undisputed title to Cody Rhodes at WrestleMania 40 during the main event, attacking Sola Sokoa and helping Cody Rhodes retain the WWE title. Cody Rhodes defeated Sola Sokoa in a Bloodline Rules match in the show's main event, a bout that included interference from Sola Sokoa's version of the Bloodline, Kevin Owens, and Randy Orton. Jacob Fatu, Tama Tonga, and Tonga Loa all interfered on Solo Sokoa's behalf, including Jacob Fatu putting Cody Rhodes through the announce desk with a top rope splash. Kevin Owens and Randy Orton interfered on Cody Rhodes' behalf, but were neutralized by the bloodline. All of this led to the return of Roman Reigns, who hit Solo Sokoa with a Superman punch and a spear, allowing Cody Rhodes to finish off Solo Sokoa to retain the undisputed WWE Championship. Roman Reigns wore a t-shirt that said OTC on the chest, a reference to his status as the original Tribal Chief. Additionally, Gunther has won the World Heavyweight Championship. The ring general defeated Damian Priest to win the World Heavyweight title for the first time. The finish involved Finn Balor coming out and putting Gunther's foot on the rope as Priest went for a pinfall. As Damian turned his back to confront Finn over what he did, Gunther locked in a sleeper hold. Damian Priest managed to escape, but Gunther powerbombed him and put him in the hold again. This time, Damian Priest passed out and the referee stopped the match. Drew McIntyre has also defeated CM Punk. Drew pinned Punk at SummerSlam in a bout where Seth Rollins served as a special guest referee. The feud was built around the conflict between all three competitors, including multiple spots where Seth could have given either competitor an advantage. Instead, he called it right down the middle. The finish came after Seth put on the friendship bracelet that Drew took from Punk in the course of their feud. Drew had McIntyre set up for a GTS, but abandoned the attempt when he saw Seth with the bracelet. Drew responded by shoving Punk into Seth. When Seth was out of the ring, Punk hit Drew McIntyre with a GTS, but Rollins was too late to count. Punk then hit Seth Rollins with a GTS. With the referee down, Drew McIntyre hit a low blow on CM Punk and connected with a Claymore kick. Rollins was revived and counted the pin and Drew posed with his foot on CM Punk's chest.
Nia Jax is the new WWE Women's Champion after defeating Bayley for the title at SummerSlam. Jax pinned Bayley following two annihilators and a distraction from Money in the Bank contract holder Tiffany Stratton to win the title at the show. WWE recognizes the current Women's Championship as having the same lineage as the WWE Women's title introduced in 2016, making this the second time Nia Jax has held this particular title and the first time since 2018 that Nia Jax has held a singles championship. LA Knight is a new United States Champion. He defeated Logan Paul to win the title. The finish of the match had Logan Paul's lackeys being taken out by LA Knight. However, Logan Paul still managed to get the brass nuts from MGK, who was at ringside. Logan Paul managed to strike LA Knight with the knuckles, but LA Knight recovered quickly to hit the BFT on Logan Paul for the win, ending Logan Paul's United States Championship reign of 273 days. Moving on, Braun Breaker captured the Intercontinental title from Sami Zayn. The match only lasted about five minutes with Sami gaining control early after dodging a spear sending Breaker into the turnbuckle. However, Braun bounced back and hit two spears, winning the title for the first time. This ends Sami Zayn's run with the title after 119 days, defeating Gunther at WrestleMania 40 and ending Gunther's own historic reign with the title after 666 days. And last but not least, Dirty Dom and Rhea Ripley are now over, and Liv Morgan is still the WWE Women's World Champion. Dominic Mysterio turned on Rhea Ripley in the SummerSlam opener to allow Liv Morgan to retain the Women's World title, and Liv and Dom kissed afterwards to cement their new alliance. That's a wrap for this SummerSlam recap vid. Thank you guys so much for watching. Do not forget to subscribe to F4W online for plenty more. Catch you on the next one.